Use the second partials test to classify any extrema for the following function, if any exist. And here we have the function f of xy is equal to 4xy minus x to the fourth minus y to the fourth. So the first thing that we need to do is find the critical points, or the potential critical points. So we need to find all the partial derivatives. So to find those potential critical points, we need the first derivatives, the first partial derivatives, and for the second partials test, we'll need the second derivatives. So we have the partial of f with respect to x is 4y minus 4x cubed. And we can simplify this a little bit by factoring out 4. So 4 multiplied by y minus x cubed. And the partial derivative with respect to y will be 4x minus 4y cubed. And again, we have a greatest common factor of 4 that we can pull out. So we'll use these first order partials for finding potential critical points. And then we'll take this one step further and find these second order partials. So I have the partial, the second order partial of x with respect to x is equal to 4 multiplied by minus 3x squared, which gives us negative 12x squared. And then we have the second order partial of x with respect to y will leave us with 4 times 1, or just 4. And then using our partial derivative with respect to y, we have the second order partial of y with respect to x, which again is 4 times 1, which gives us 4, so that's a great sign. And then taking the second order partial of y with respect to y, we have 4 multiplied by minus 3y squared, which gives us minus 12y squared. So now we're ready to find the potential critical points. So to find these potential critical points, we are going to need to solve the system of equations defined by the partial derivatives set equal to zero. So I have the partial derivative of x set equal to zero, and the partial derivative of y set equal to zero. And we're solving this for ordered pairs x, y. So taking what we just found, we have the partial derivative with respect to x is 4 multiplied by y minus x cubed set equal to zero. And the partial derivative with respect to y is 4 times x minus y cubed is equal to zero. And for both of these equations, we can simplify them by dividing both sides by 4, which leaves us with y minus x cubed set equal to zero, and x minus y cubed set equal to zero. To start solving here, we want to pick either equation. So we'll start with our partial derivative with respect to x, and we'll solve for y. So I have y is equal to x cubed. And we're now going to substitute this into the second equation. So we're going to now have x minus, we're replacing y here with x cubed. So this will become x minus x cubed cubed, which gives us x minus x to the ninth. We want to factor for our safety, so I have x times 1 minus x to the eighth. And now this is set equal to 0. And we think of our two cases here. We have the case when x is equal to 0. And then case 2, we have 1 minus x to the eighth is equal to 0. And we add x to the eighth to both sides of the expression. And taking the square root of both sides here, we are left with 2x values plus or minus 1. So to find the corresponding y partners for these, we want to plug them back into our first equation here. So we have the case when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 cubed, which leaves us with 0. 
Let's see the potential critical point at the origin. We have the case when x is equal to positive 1. So y is equal to positive 1 cubed, which leaves us with 1. So we have a potential critical point at 1, 1. And then last but not least, when x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 1 cubed, which leaves us with minus 1. So we have the potential critical point at negative 1, 1. So now to classify these potential critical points as extrema, we need to apply the second partial test. So let's quickly recall the second partials test tells us for some potential critical point AB. If we substitute it into the discriminant, we're able to determine if that point is a local maxima, a local minima, a saddle point, or if our test is inconclusive. So we're going to substitute each of our potential critical points into this discriminant formula. So case one, we're thinking about the potential critical point, zero, zero. We have the second derivative of x with respect to x at 0, 0 will be equal to negative 12 times 0, which leaves us with 0. We have the second order partial of y with respect to y at the origin, which will also produce 0. And then last but not least, we have the second order partial of x with respect to y at the origin, which is equal to 4. So plugging this into our discriminant formula, we'll have 0 multiplied by 0 minus 4 squared, which we can see is negative, less than 0. So therefore, f has a saddle point at the origin. Or a saddle point is produced when the point x, y is equal to our origin. Next, we want to test the point when x, y is equal to 1, 1. So we have the second order partial of x with respect to x at 1, 1 is negative 12 times 1, which leaves us with minus 12. We have the second order partial of y with respect to y at 1, 1 which again is going to leave us with negative 12. And then we have the second order partial of x with respect to y at 1, 1, which is equal to 4. So the discriminant at the point 1, 1 will be equal to negative 12 times negative 12 minus 4 squared. So since negative 12 times negative 12 produces a positive value, a much la larger positive value than 4 squared, we can see our discriminant is positive. So therefore, since our discriminant at 1, 1 is positive, and the second order partial of x with respect to x at 1, 1 is less than 0, we can say that our function f has a local maxima at the point 1, 1. And then last but not least, we have our final potential critical point, x, y at negative 1, negative 1. So you have the second order partial of x with respect to x at negative 1. Negative 1 is negative 12 multiplied by minus 1 squared, which is negative 12. The second order partial of y with respect to y at negative 1, 1 is also going to produce negative 12. And the second order partial of x with respect to y at negative 1, 1 is 4. So noticing here that these are the same conclusions as our previous case, 
we can say that therefore, since the discriminant at the ordered pair negative 1, negative 1 is greater than 0, and the second order partial of x with respect to x at negative 1, negative 1 is less than 0, our surface F has a local maxima at the point negative 1, negative 1. And so we have finished classifying the extrema for this given function.